Retract the bang, please. Retract, retract the bang. Okay, we're on the floor because this is where this pairing deserves to be. Falling in love with Jeff Bezos. What the f was that film? <laughs> Okay, I get a lot of requests <laughs> for videos I don't feel qualified to make, uh, but I got a request recently that was just like, Lena, can you make a video about on-screen boyfriends that can get in the bin? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I already have notes. Yes, I make notes on my phone of like things that just really bug me and sometimes those things turn into videos but mainly they're just therapy for me. And I've been keeping a list now for a while, a little running tally of relationships that I don't think should happen. Um, and, and, and also, this is completely contrary to my actual beliefs about art. I think if it's possible, if it could happen, then you should be able to make a story or a film about it. It doesn't need to always be a moral or like some kind of biblical allegory for how we should be living. However, it brings me great joy to bring you this video today because I feel like they're the kind of things that I always wanna rant about in the pub. And I haven't been to a pub in about two years and it's making me sad. So here are the things that I'd rant about, contrary to my actual beliefs that everyone's allowed to make art about whatever they like. Um, the first one is the love story. <laughs> big inverted commas, between Kathleen Kelly and Joe Fox in You've Got Mail. Now this is a film I only recently saw um, and as somebody who works in publishing it's kind of like the staple publishing film that everyone is like you have to watch it, you have to watch it, so beautiful. So I watched it and it made me realise why the UK publishing industry is in such a f***ing mess. We spend most of the film following this character who loves books, who understands the importance and the personal touch of an independent bookshop. Her mother, who is dead, has left her this bookshop and it's the only thing she has of her and it means the world to her. And what is the resolution to this character's total inner turmoil? Falling in love with Jeff Bezos. I, 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 there is nothing likeable about this character, nothing vaguely believable that a woman as intelligent as this would fall for some f sorry, what a potty mouth, morally and intellectually questionable businessman who, not at the end of the film, doesn't redeem himself by giving her her bookshop back, even though he f steals it from her, he doesn't, she doesn't even get to run a cool part of his bookshop, she just gets to like live in his radiant light, he doesn't, actually learn anything and it, her all her dreams are destroyed and she doesn't care because she's getting dick from this guy <laughs> it doesn't make any sense <laughs> this is not a believable narrative for me please move on number two now if this is news to you it means you're not following me on instagram rude um but i have a poetry collection coming out next year Whee! i'm so excited um i'll leave links to that below if you want to find out more about it it's not on pre-order yet but i'll let you know when it is but it's called bargain bin rom-com and i've written a really short poem that i'm unsure about whether it's actually going to make it into the collection let me know in the comments but the poem is called rachel rachel should have stayed on the plane there are dinosaurs in paris I looked it up. <laughs> Poetry is anything you want it to be, what can I say? But I just, I just, there is no world in which the character that we watched for 10 seasons develop her career, push Ross away in loads of ways where he was getting in the way of her career, in a loving way. I don't think there is a psychological reality in which Rachel would have got off the plane. It doesn't make any sense. Rachel's job was a once in a lifetime chance. Ross's job could be done remotely, if not moved bloody anywhere. And he's been in that role so long and is probably so highly paid that his chance at like career success is not as urgent as hers. He's had that success for a long time. She's only just getting this huge notoriety. And this is, this is the pattern with finance and the economy and women in general in that they are asked to give up their dreams even though their partner has already achieved their dreams and just wants to carry on the intellectual head patting of their jobs and I can't stress to you enough how many paleontology opportunities there are in France. I can't stress to you enough. Also Emma could have grown up bilingual and as somebody who could have grown up bilingual as well, my bo both my parents are very fluent in Brazilian Portuguese, did they choose to teach it to me? No, instead they used it as a secret adult language so they could plot against me as a child. <laughs> 
it's fine. But Emma could have grown up bilingual, incredible. I'm just saying, if Ross was that upset, he could have at least put a CV around some places, you know? He could have at least, could have at least packed a bag and tried. Number three, we don't have to cover though on this one too heavily, because I have covered it in another video, but Bridget and Mark, there is, it, there's no binary choice between Mark's and Daniel's. There were other men in the world, and I just think, <laughs> that Mark Darcy lacks some kind of universal empathy and therefore isn't completely right for Bridget. Oh, just saying. And anyway, if you read the books, you realise that Helen Fielding thinks that too because <laughs> only a small spoiler, but like, read the books, man. Read the books. Okay, number four. Okay, we're on the floor because this is where this pairing deserves to be. Jacob and Renesme. Jacob and Renesmee. I've never thrown a book across a room before or since reading that paragraph from Stephanie Mayer. She almost absolved herself by writing one of the best books ever, The Host, but like, Jacob <laughs> and Renesmee. Here ended the sermon. Okay, I'm willing to revise this one, should anyone who remembers the book be able to correct me. Uh, but in The Time Traveller's Wife, the film, I read the book, but it was like 2011, so who knows. In the film, the first time Claire meets Henry is when Henry has already met Claire, if you know, you know. There is no origin story shown where Claire and Henry meet when Claire is an adult first, because I think that everything is more close to being fine if Henry and Claire meet in an adult setting and then Henry is flown back to the past and meets her as a child and is in no way sexual with her, just make sure that she's okay. But mm, <laughs> in the film, we don't see that. The Genesis story for Claire seems to be her meeting him as an adult. And I just I just think there's something a bit funny about that. And I'm not com completely convinced that that's the way Audrey Nifninger, Nifling, Nifling, Nif Audrey wrote. But in the film, I just needed to see a scene <laughs> where Henry and Claire meet as adults first. Although the time travel thing in that is very, very confusing and I've tried to map it a few times and I have no idea what's going on. But I have full trust that somebody in the world knows what's going on in that film. But I just think that if that scene doesn't exist, then they should, the film versions of them should not, should not. Mm. Okay, this one comes with a caveat that's gonna hurt a lot of you out there. But when I did my Emma adaptation video and people told me that I'd left Clueless out <laughs> of the adaptation list, I just have to tell you honestly, as a Jane Austen scholar, self-baptised in the same way that you can become a nutritionist or a vicar online. Clueless is not an adaptation of Emma. It is a loosely inspired by Emma. In the same way that The Lion King isn't Hamlet. And here's one of the, one of the many examples as to why. Uh, she doesn't get together with her brother. That is grim. He's, he has been <laughs> in a sibling role in her life for a really long time in the in the clueless and that is really fucked up and he's like in modern times so like in a superior mm, whereas in the book no he's not her brother he has never been in a brotherly role their parents have never been in any way sexually entangled he's just a friend of the family and if a writer that has been dead for like hundreds of years can get a better handle on what is morally correct here <laughs> and less weird or at least needing a bit more commentary on then i don't know what to say to hollywood writers i don't understand why you needed to make him her brother it doesn't make any sense and is one of the reasons it relegates it for me in my heart as anywhere close to a jane austen adaptation no, that was just such a weird unnecessary choice why did you have to make that a thing it doesn't make any sense Kira knightley and steve carell <laughs> in Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. This stinks of a script that was written as like a friendship narrative, even by the title, right? And then someone later down the production line was like, they need to fall in love. They need to bang. It needs to happen. It's so constructed. <laughs> there is, it, in no universe do I feel any chemistry between these actors or characters. And like, why do they, why can't they just be friends at the end of the world? Literally the fact that they're in love moves the narrative on nada, nothing. They could have done this as friends. Everything they do for each other at the end of the film, they could have done as friends. Anyway, you should watch that film, especially if you have like eco anxiety stuff. Like for some reason it really helped me. You should watch, it's a great film, but like they didn't need to bang. Retract the bang, please. Retract, retract the bang. Groundhog Day. If you need to live one one gazillion lives and transform your whole personality completely for a woman to like you. 
maybe she just doesn't like you. I do like the character transformation in this film. I think it's an incredible film, but like so much of who he is is staged for her. And regardless of whether he actually does start changing as the film carries on, it's just such a weird, it's such a weird love story to explain to people. And she'll never know. That's as well, like, we don't have, to, if these people end up together, that is a really big secret to keep from her that you actually had to live 1000 lives to become in any way a decent enough a person for her to to consider kissing <laughs> like you can't miss that out that's quite a big life event so at what point is that going to come out and is then is she going to feel tricked probably i just don't see a groundhog 2 uh in which the characters are happy five words as good as it gets <laughs> and oh boy i really hope this is not as good as it gets she, I'm actually, you know what, I'm not even going to explain the plot of this, but for anyone who has seen As Good As It, get, good, uh, the, the, as good as it Gets, um, I think it's going to leave generations of people confused for a long time, and I hope it's a film that is just like really, really just forgotten, buried by the quantity of content in the world, and just, just slowly eroded by history, because what the f*** was that film? And then finally, the intern, the be he didn't just cheat on her once, he cheated on her so many times while they had small children and he did it in a calculated way. It wasn't like, oops, I slipped up once at a party because I was having an existential meltdown, I didn't really know who I was. This was like calculated. And then for some reason, him just coming into her office after he's like stopped her and guilt tripped her about being a CEO of a company. And like, we used to have this joke in the office that was like, we were talking, we were trying to list films where like women had jobs and that was okay. List below, please films in which uh, there is a female character who has a job and that's okay and there's no like big plot point around it or like nothing about it ruins her relationship <sighs> and hathaway's characters don't have a great history of uh, boyfriends being okay that they have jobs but like this is the worst one basically she spoiler alert she forgives him at the end and there is no real character build up as to why it doesn't really make any sense and yet this film offers exponential value as a friend com between richard de niro is that his name between anne hathaway and robert de niro and it's possibly one of the most wholesome films i've ever watched so despite the fact that the twatty ginger cheater gets his way at the end. It's totally fine and I'm calm about it as you can tell. Let's have some water and calm down, shall we? Okay. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. The world is a beautiful place to live in. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Apparently 35% of the people who watch haven't subscribed. So come on, stay, make the commitment. You know it's right says toxic boyfriend at the end of film. Um, here are some other videos I think you might like. Um, thank you so much to the Gumption Club for making these videos possible and free for everybody to watch. Frog's not out.